fans of Opel will agree that it is encouraging to see parent company General Motors plowing investment into the brand. And it's about time. New powertrains, new products, and a rejuvenated brand image will undoubtedly save it from the fate that beset other GM divisions like Saab and Pontiac. Following the arrival of the Adam and Corsa, this new mocha serves to fill a gap in the ever-popular crossover segment, which is fiercely competitive as you know. So let's see if it's any good. On the styling front, it has all those hallmark shoppers in this segment love. A chunky profile, rugged body cladding, and the overall impression that it's destined for a bit more than the urban commute. It's pretty, if a bit conservative, but there's good reason for that. You see, Opel are working hard to remind everyone that they are German, and part of that means taking a Teutonic approach to areas like styling. Opel's marketing folks have said it themselves, that the market is self-assured and modern with no arrogance or gimmickry. Now we wouldn't be your favorite trusted motoring program if we didn't give you all the details. And while this Mokka is new to SA, it's not actually that new, having been launched overseas a few years ago. That means that it doesn't have the full range of latest generation engines and transmissions that you get in the Adam and Corsa. There is only one engine choice on offer and that is a 1.4 litre turbocharged engine producing 103 kilowatts and 200 newton meters of torque. You can have this with a 6-speed manual gearbox or Opel 6-speed hydromatic automatic transmission, which is one component here that is all new. And I think the two pedal choice is the most flattering combination for the Mokka, given its urban and leisure lifestyle accessory persona. If you've got any plans to hit the Bundus on the weekend, you might want to consider something else. The Mokka is only available as a front wheel drive car and there are no four wheel drive derivatives on offer. Having said that though, I can understand the allure of a compact crossover like this. I mean, compared to something like a Corsa, the driving position is a little more elevated and the suspension is just a little more supple. My only criticism is the road noise. It can get quite noisy in here at speeds of up to 130 thereabouts. And there are a few rattles in the cabin as well. If those were sorted though, it would be a superb long distance tourer. There are two model grades on offer, the standard Enjoy and the Cosmo. We're in the Enjoy and it's amply equipped. It's got Bluetooth, cruise control, climate control, and all the other conveniences you expect from a car in 2015. The only thing you can specify is Opel's IntelliLink interface with smartphone integration that enables navigation and satellite radio. But the Cosmo turns it up a notch a little. It's got leather seats, which are heated as well, and stuff like a reverse camera and rain sensing wipers and rain sensing lights. Now I must be honest, I grimace just a little on seeing the price list for the new Opel Mokka. Things range between 288,500 Rand and 335,500 Rand. Yes, they're German and yes, they are going for a premium air, but I'm not so sure buyers are prepared to fork out that much for an Opel in this segment just yet. Its position in the market is also tricky because it straddles two segments. It's built as a competitor to the Ford EcoSport, Renault Duster and Nissan Juke, but it's also got its eyes on the Nissan Qashqai and Mini Countryman. Now that's pretty bold of Opel, but only time will tell whether this brazen approach pays off. 